Debt Warrior is listening, and welcome back to another episode of Millennial Debt Domination. I'm your host, Katie Fatta. Today's episode will be the last episode in our three part student loan series. This episode will be about mastering your student loans after you've attended school. I'll be interviewing Amanda, who has a bachelor's degree, a doctoral degree, and student loans. Amanda has been graduated for some time now and is on the track to fully dominating her student loan debt. Amanda and I will be discussing why she decided to go continue school, school, although she had student loan debt, how student loans affected her employment decision, and what advice she has for young people who want to continue their education but fear to have to take out more student loans. This is also the last call to send in your questions for our Ask Me Anything podcast we'll be recording. You can find all the information on where to send your questions in the the description of this podcast. Now let's get to my interview with Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for being on the podcast today. Hi, Katie. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you today because this is going to be the third episode in our student loan kind of series we're doing right now. So I just want to start off by asking, where did you go for undergraduate school and what did you study? Yeah, so I went to the University of Maryland uh, down in College Park, Mm -hmm. uh, not too far outside of D.C. I earned my Bachelor's of Science in Kinesiology which um, is the study of human movement. Mm -hmm. So most most of the time, uh, those who major in kinesiology will then go on to grad, some sort of grad school, uh, whether it's athletic training, exercise physiology, occupational or physical therapy, um, something in the wellness industry. Okay, that's awesome. And then where then after that, you've mentioned graduate school that most people get their go to graduate school after studying that. So where did you go to graduate school? And what did you study there? Yes. So I went to Long Island University in their Brooklyn campus. So I was in New York City, which was fun. Um, I received my doctorate in physical therapy. Okay. So did you go right from undergraduate to grad school or did you take time off? Because everybody has like a different route when when it comes to that. Yeah. So I did end up taking one year off in between. Okay. So what led you to kind of making that decision to taking a year off? Yeah, there were a few factors. So number one was, you know, I just wanted to take a breath and kind Mm -hmm. of sit back and see, is this um, plunge into graduate school the right, uh, the right thing for me? Mm-hmm. So what I did during that year was I, I actually ended up working as a physical therapy aide in an mm-hmm. office, and I was living at home, so I was saving <laughs> money mm-hmm. on rent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and with working in the physical therapy office, it gave me certainly um, – more insight into, is this something I really want to do? Is this something I really want to invest my time and money on? Because certainly I had uh, a bunch of loans coming out of undergraduate uh, studies and I knew I was going to have, you know, (laughs) a lot more if I did plan, (laughs) pursue um, this degree in physical therapy. Yeah, we definitely have to get into the loans a little bit later in the podcast. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> um, so I know you kind of mentioned that what, what you studied in undergrad, most people do go on to grad school after. So did you always know you wanted to attend graduate school or was it something you discovered about yourself while obtaining your bachelor's degree? How did it kind of come all come about? Yeah, so when I first started undergrad graduate school, I did not have the idea of graduate school in my, in the back of my mind or in the front of my mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, What happened probably whenever it was, you know, late sophomore year, early junior year, I became interested in the idea of physical therapy. And then I started doing research and obviously, you know, found out I do need to go to more school to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, And at that point, I started using my elective credits that I needed to take courses anyway um, to fulfill any prerequisites. So I took a second biology, the chemistry 
elective courses, the physics courses that were not part of the kinesiology curriculum, mm -hmm. but that I knew I had to have if I did, you know, go on to graduate school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so you, so you, that you decided you can you needed to go if you wanted to pursue what you wanted, but then there's always the looming of student loans that come with going to school. <laughs> so, yes. do you, so I know you mentioned it, but you have student loans. So since you, did you, did the loans play a factor into your decision to attend graduate school? Kind of go through that for us. Sure. Um, at the time, actually, even though I did have a good chunk of student loans from undergrad, mm -hmm. the, the, the idea of student loans did not um, affect my decision to go to grad school. I wish I had at the time thought more about it, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, and, <laughs> and to have had to developed a better plan. But mm -hmm. at the time I knew that physical therapy was something I really wanted to do. Um, and I knew also that in obtaining that degree, it was going to give me a significant pay bump um, versus just having mm -hmm. that kinesiology degree. So I think those factors outweighed. Um, and I kind of, I didn't think too much about the student loan. Yeah. So again, in hindsight, I wish I had a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. No, definitely. I was just last week, I actually was interviewing my friend Sarah about she also got her master's in genetic counseling. And she was talking about you have to add kind of outweigh if it if you think what you're going to be making after you graduate affects totally. what you're going to. Yes. Yeah, so you do have to I guess it's different for everybody in every kind of major. Yes, completely. You know, yeah, I guess you have to outweigh if it's worth it or not. But I guess for you, it seems like it was worth it. I guess it depends what you're um, what you're going to study. So um, when you first had to start paying back your loans, I guess, when you graduated from undergrad, how hard was it to make payments when you first started? And what payment plans did you select? Did you have any kind of plan of attack when conquering your loans? Or what, how, did, how did that work for you? So when I first started paying back loans, again, so knowing the amount I had from undergrad, and graduate school, mm -hmm. I knew that I was not going to be able to be as aggressive as I would have liked, okay. just based on, you know, a new grad salary is certainly not as much as yeah. mm -hmm. once you have years under your belt. Right. Um, so what I did do, my only plan of attack at that point was just to, you know, get through month to month, right? So I mm -hmm. immediately enrolled in an income driven repayment plan. Okay. And that monthly payment was very reasonable and very realistic based on what I was making at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my only plan of attack in the beginning, because unfortunately, this podcast didn't exist. So I didn't, <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> um, I didn't really have any other insight from any other sources. So um, once once I was making these monthly payments and feeling good about that, I did start to do some research. I came across the public service loan forgiveness plan. Yeah. And luckily at the time I was at a physical therapy office that was considered a nonprofit because it was part of a larger hospital system okay. in New York city. So I filed all my paperwork for that, which is a headache, but totally worth yeah. it. <laughs> um, and that became my new plan. So okay. So again, I just continued to make uh, payments on time. I knew that was important for yeah. that program and just in general for credit and all that. Um, once I got my federal loans under control, mm -hmm. then I realized, hey, these private loans are not going away. Right. So, <laughs> so that was my next project. And during that time, you know, I was trying to be more aggressive and just put any extra amount of money that I could towards those private loans to get uh -huh. them paid paid as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. During that time, I actually had moved from New York City to Minneapolis for, for two years. Okay. Um, and because the cost of living is significantly mm -hmm. less yes. in Minnesota versus mm -hmm. New York City, yeah. I was able to aggressively pay those private loans off during the time I was there. And that felt really satisfying. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> to, I know that. Yeah. That's... Those, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, um, just to get those private loans out of the way. Yeah. So um, I'd actually had a follow up. So did you start the new plan after you graduated grad school? Like when did you stop doing the income driven plan? 
So actually, I'm still on the income driven okay. repay- repayment plan because okay. it's actually a criteria for the public service loan oh, okay. plan. Got yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And then when you um, first started paying, um, you said you, so you immediately switched to the income driven plan. I'm assuming the payments were pretty, they weren't huge when you first started making them back. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, they go based off of your income yeah. from your ta- taxes from the previous year. So mm-hmm. it, you know, the first year I actually didn't pay anything because yeah. I wasn't working in grad mm-hmm. school. So that gives you time to save you know, those, you know, yeah. payments are coming the next year. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it was really not an issue for me, um, which I feel grateful for. Obviously, yeah. I know that's not the case for everyone. So while you were, this is a, just a follow up. So while you were in grad school, were you continuing to pay your undergrad loans or did you completely defer them? I did defer them. Okay. All right. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> so like having student loans like affects everybody's life differently, especially kind of like your life priorities. So does having, um, has have, sorry, has, <laughs> does having the student loan debt affect your life priorities? Does it, you know, alter your plans you originally had for your personal life? How does having this debt affect that? Um, I don't feel too affected. And again, I do feel grateful for that. I mm-hmm. think being, because my plan is um, the public service loan forgiveness, it is a very reasonable monthly payment. So I can just throw that into my budgeting just as if it was any, any other bill, you know, mm-hmm. paying rent, paying electricity, you know, paying my student loans. Mm-hmm. And it still leaves me with some disposable income at the end of the month which, you know, I can right. afford little treats here and there. And I do think that's important to have a balance. I Definitely. mean, certainly paying off your debts is very important, but you need to have some sort of quality of life and, and pay attention to your mental health. It's yeah. it's a part of your total health and wellness. No, oh, right? for sure. <laughs> I, I agree. You definitely need to have that part of life too. Yeah. <laughs> so um, now that you've graduated, what are you currently doing for work? Yeah, so I am a physical therapist. Uh, I work in the clinical setting, so I do work directly with patients. I'm in an outpatient setting, so we see a lot of sports injuries, uh, which, yeah. (laughs) Um, But I am part of a part of New York Presbyterian, which is a larger Mm -hmm. hospital network in New York City, and that is um, it is a nonprofit. Um, So that satisfies the criteria for the public service loan forgiveness. Right. I was going to say, I know you've been talking about that. Um, the, uh, so did having your, your student loans after um, af- affect, sorry, affect your decision on where you wanted to be employed? Did you know you wanted to work at a nonprofit because of that? I would say, you know, 100 percent. I am working at this place because of my student loans. Right. <laughs> it is a great place to to work. And I feel lucky that, you know, um, I found this place, but I would not be there if it weren't for my student loans. I would be working in a private practice setting, um, which I actually had done. um, When I first graduated for a year, I worked at a different clinic that was part of a hospital as well. I left there and I tried private practice for three years, which was Mm -hmm. A, an awesome job, but it was not doing anything for my loans. And right. I knew that I had to be a little bit more responsible about right. that and just have a better plan of attack. So then I went back into the nonprofit world and I feel good about that plan now, but it's certainly a sacrifice. Right. So how long have you been at the nonprofit now? Uh, the nice, well, the nice thing about this public service loan forgiveness plan uh-huh. is you they credit you. It does not need to be consecutive years. So my uh-huh. first year counted towards oh, okay. it. Then I took a three-year three, three year gap um, at the private practice. That didn't count, but it also didn't ne- negatively affect me. Uh-huh. And then now I've been in the nonprofit again for another three, three to four. So I have a good five to six years left <laughs> um, with the program. But mm-hmm. again, I think it is totally worth it just based on how many loans I racked up <laughs> in my oh, yeah. studies. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. So yeah. do you feel you've mastered your student loan trajectory? Or do you feel like you still have a long way to go? 
I do feel like I have mastered it and it feels good to say. Yeah, that <laughs> is know, great. Yeah, seven years ago when I was fresh out of grad school and looking, you know, logging into the website and looking at my student loan balance, I Mm -hmm. feel like I would have never gotten to the point to say that I have mastered Mm it. Um, But really just with the the choices I've made on, on these repayment plans, I do feel like I have a clear attainable path to, you know, getting rid of these loans. Yeah, no, definitely. So I know you said you have your ba- your bachelor's degree and your doctoral degrees. Would you like to go back to school again? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm not thinking school right. again for me. Um, I think partly because uh, in my field, I want to st- stay in the clinical setting. And for physical therapists, more school at this point would mean either like an MBA to get more into management, which Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't really want to do at this point, or more of a a research driven position, perhaps I could go on and get my PhD. But again, for now, for me, I am, I am really liking the clinical setting. So that's where I'm going to (laughs) stay. Okay, that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So lastly, do you have any advice for someone who fears going back to school because they don't want to take out any more loans? Yes, definitely. Um, The loans are certainly daunting, but my advice would be to just make a plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, I kind of figured out my plan (laughs) during repayment, which, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think certainly in hindsight wasn't the best. Um, And you can save yourself a lot of stress if you go into it before you start studying have a plan, you know, consider, do your research. So, yeah. so consider a few schools, consider the city or t- town it's in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, certainly New York City has a higher cost of living versus, you know, right. uh, in a suburb or Minnesota or whatever it is. Um, and look for ways, which your podcast does an excellent um, <laughs> job of giving people ideas Thank on you. certainly <laughs> how to save money. So like, can you live at home for even, right. you know, one of the four years is, right. is a big, um, big way to save money. And then the other thing I would say, too, is which I wish I had done is, you know, only only take out the minimum of the financial aid you really need. Right. I, I actually found it too easy to take out the maximum and I wasn't really planning. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. I wasn't thinking about what I was doing because you right. have to pay back all that stuff with interest, a lot right. of interest. Yeah. So I've, only take the minimum you need. Yeah. Right. A little. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know that. They don't know going in what they're exactly doing. So it's good to kind of maybe even talk to someone who has student loans or do your research or listen to like a podcast or something. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even talk to some professionals in your fields. I, you know, I find I love talking to people about becoming a physical therapist you know the fun parts of it but also the parts that aren't fun you know talking right. about loans and some of these government programs that are available for you because they're certainly different depending on what career you choose but there there are ways to to plan and to do it so okay. yeah definitely but yeah. um well thank you for being on the podcast today and sharing your story with us I think you're uh, very welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, yeah, I definitely wish you luck with uh, your career. And thanks for being here. Thanks, Katie. In the past three episodes, we've talked about many different aspects of student loans, and I feel as if we've only scratched the surface. Amanda's student loan story is probably similar to anyone who's gone on to school uh, again after obtaining a bachelor's degree. Do your research on different programs and factor in the cost element as well. Also, consider the pay bump you will get if you decide to continue school and factor that into the amount your student loans will be. Continuing your education might not be as out of reach as you thought. As always, if you have student loan questions and you feel as if you can't handle them, you can reach out to a certified credit counselor here at Navicor Solutions. We have credit counselors who specialize in student loan counseling. Lastly, don't forget to send me your money questions for my upcoming Ask Me Anything podcast. You can find all the information for Navicor and where to send your questions in the description of this podcast. That wraps up, wraps up another episode of Millennial Debt Domination. 
please subscribe to our podcast wherever you're listening and rate and review us on iTunes. Thank you for listening, millennials, Gen Zers, and everyone else. Talk to you next time. Bye.